Hi, this is Jeff West, and I want to give you a brief intro and demo of the WebLogic Server zip distribution that's available in WebLogic Server 1034. Before we dive into the demo, I'd like to give a quick introduction of the WebLogic zip distribution. In 2010, we announced a new form of distributing WebLogic via a zip distribution. This is available now and downloadable from the Oracle Technology Network. The zip distribution reduces the download size of WebLogic by over 70%, thereby making it easier to access and easier to use for developers. The zip distribution contains a complete distribution of the WebLogic runtime, so it provides the full set of capabilities. It omits minor tools that we believe are not essential for development usage scenarios. For example, the Smart Update tool that is used for patching WebLogic is not included. To use the zip distribution, you just download on zip and go. It's portable and platform independent. We provide support for automating domain creation upon startup and support the popular platforms for development, not only Windows and Linux, but also OS X systems. Applications developed with the WebLogic zip distribution are fully compatible with standard WebLogic installations and are therefore fully compatible with deployment to WebLogic production environments. Now let's see how we can download and get the zip distribution up and running. So let's take a look at how you would download the zip distribution. You can find it on the standard download page and you can find the link beneath the Windows and Linux installers. So you have to have an OTN account to download it, and then you're prompted to download it, and it is 316 megs, and uh, I'm on a 15 or 10 megabit download, so it'll take about two or three minutes to download. I'm not going to hold the video for that entire time, but you can see 316 megs is a lot better than one gigabyte for downloading WebLogic. So let's see how fast I can install and get the zip distribution running. So go ahead and extract the files. So there is a configure command. And you'll see here that you have to set an environment variable, which is middleware home. So let's go ahead and set that. First, actually, I want to make sure that I have my Java Home set to the version that I want. So I'm going to set it to JRocket. So now it's going through the configuration script. So now I'm going to use my uh, JRE to start my WebLogic server. And we'll see that it does not find a config XML file. So we are prompted to automatically create it. So now I have provided the credentials to start the server. So next time I start the server, I'll provide the same credentials. And these are also the credentials needed to log into the admin console. So, uh, server starting up. We're about a minute and 45 seconds in, and now the server has started. So next, let's log into the admin console. So here we go, about two minutes and five seconds in, we are up and running with the admin console. You can see that there is a server created um, and there are no other um, configurations applied for data sources or JMS or anything like that. It's just a default server and then I can start running and deploying applications here um, right now. So that was pretty fast for installing and starting WebLogic. I think most people would agree with that. But um, you might be wondering what type of system I'm running on. 
So I'm running on a 2010 MacBook Pro, and I am going to pull up the Windows information so we can take a look and see what, what I've got here. So I've got a Core 5 i CPU, which is pretty fast, dual core, it's the M540 at 2.53 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM and a 64-bit operating system. So 8 gigs of RAM is pretty much inconsequential here. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a current system, and it's very fast. So it took about two minutes and five seconds to get everything up and running, right? So what would happen if we ran this and tried to do the same thing on a Windows XP machine that is a Core 2 Duo that's about four years old with a running a hypervisor and then a VM on top of that? It should be slower, right? Let's take a look and see what happens. So let's try on this uh, Windows XP machine and see what happens. So slower disks here, uh, I'm using, this is actually running on a hypervisor, and we're at about one minute for unzipping it, and keep in mind this is an old slow machine. Alright, there we go. Ah, yes, Java Home, set that. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to start my server, create the default, now it's starting up. While that's going on, I'm going to open up a browser and get ready to open up the console. Okay, there we are up and running in about 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Now I'll try to open the console. And there we are, about 3 minutes in. Then for this time, it was about 3 minutes and 25 seconds to get the admin console up and running from not having WebLogic installed at all. So I think that pretty much shows how fast you can get it uh, downloaded and installed. Blast from the past there with WebLogic 8.1. Um, let's take a look at the properties for this machine. So I have, uh, on this machine I've got, this is a uh, dual core, 
um, or Core 2 Duo, the first version of the dual core CPU, 2.8 gigahertz, with uh, 3 gigs of RAM here running Windows XP. So, uh, as we have shown, it's pretty fast to get the WebLogic ZIP distribution downloaded and running. So, uh, we're pretty pleased with what we've accomplished and hope you will be too. So, that's it for this presentation. If you need more information about WebLogic, you can find us online on the Oracle Technology Network or one of the social media channels below. Thanks.